as film viewers, it's easy to lose track of just how much time and effort goes into even the most mundane details on a movie production. But often Hollywood craftsfolk are well aware of our blissful ignorance and won't put themselves above cutting some corners when the time calls for it. After all, who's gonna notice? But thanks to eagle-eyed film buffs and occasionally the filmmakers themselves, we've become aware of countless film props from the mundane to the iconic, which have been unexpectedly reused in other movies. Now these recycled props are easily missed, because of course they are, but once you know, you'll never be able to unsee it. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie for What Culture, here with 10 movie props you won't believe were reused in other films. Number 10. True Lies Airplane – The Avengers James Cameron's 1994 action comedy classic True Lies memorably concludes with Arnie saving the day in a US Marine AV-AB2 Harrier jet, which he uses to rescue his daughter and literally fire the terrorist antagonist to his doom. The jet prop reportedly sat in a desert garage for almost 20 years before reappearing in 2012's The Avengers, briefly visible in the helicarrier when the Hulk is battling Thor. Thor ends up knocking the big green guy into it with his hammer, prompting him to rip one of the wings off and hurl it at the Asgardian. Joss Whedon confirmed on the Avengers Blu-ray release that the prop was the very same, albeit given a makeover by his production team and slapped with the shield insignia. And the story doesn't end there. A group of collectors then brought the smashed up remains of the Harrier and spent two years restoring it. Now it's a tourist attraction with one side restored to its true lies glory and the others the Avengers. Number 9. 2001 at Space Odyssey's EVA pod, Star Wars Episode 1 – The Phantom Menace if you've ever seen Stanley Kubrick's magnificent 2001 A Space Odyssey, you quite probably remember the distinctive design of the EVA pods used by the astronauts to perform scouting and repair activities outside of their spacecraft. Now, Kubrick being Kubrick, he was extremely strict about all the movie's props being destroyed at the end of production, to ensure that no future projects could repurpose the materials for their own means. But someone clearly didn't get that memo, or did and just ignored it, as the EVA pod makes a cameo appearance in the junkyard in Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, some 31 years later, mere months after Kubrick's death, coincidentally. Or was it? Well, quite what Stan would have made of this, or of the CGI slathered abomination that was The Phantom Menace, we'll sadly never know. Number 8. Seven Severed Head – Contagion and now we have a rather special case of prop recycling, because the prop itself didn't actually appear on screen in the film it was originally created for. For the climax of David Fincher's masterful 1995 thriller Seven, Detective Mills is gifted his pregnant wife's decapitated head in a box, and a lifelike replica of Gwyneth Paltrow's head was made for this scene. However, Brad Pitt ultimately convinced the producers not to show the prop to the audience, arguing that the implication was far more effective, and he was surely right. So whatever happened to that fake severed head? Well, over 15 years later, Gwyneth's fake noggin was dusted off for Steven Soderbergh's outstanding 2011 thriller Contagion. Paltrow's character dies in one of the film's very first scenes, and her replica head was put to use in an extremely graphic autopsy sequence where her character's scalp is peeled backwards. The thought of this prop just sitting around in a studio vault somewhere for so long is both hilarious, but also really, really terrifying. Number 7. Kill Bill's Samurai Swords – Sin City Kill Bill Vol. 1 features a whole heap of swordplay, with the bride and Oren Ishii and her crazy 88 army all making liberal use of their bladed weapons. But two of the samurai swords used by the crazy 88 actually found their way into Robert Rodriguez's Sin City just two years later, as wielded by the live yet lethal Miho. Quentin Tarantino, who is of course close friends with Rodriguez, had been keeping the swords in his garage, as you do, and offered them to Rodriguez to use in his film. Now the story gets even cooler because on the Sin City DVD, Frank Miller stated that he personally retconned Miho's swords to have been created by Kill Bill's legendary swordsmith Hattori Hanzo. How cool is that? Number 6. Predator's Minigun – Terminator 2 Judgment Day Nobody who's seen 1987's testosterone fueled action classic Predator can forget the comically macho deforestation sequence where Mac panic fires the team's gigantic minigun, nicknamed Old Painless, into the bushes in the hope of killing the Predator. To no avail, of course. Similarly, you probably fondly remember the iconic set piece in Terminator 2 Judgment Day, where Arnie disables an entire fleet of cops, but doesn't kill anyone, by firing a minigun at them. And because these scenes just aren't awesome enough on their own, they both in fact share the same minigun prop. 
Stembridge Gun Rentals supplied the weapons for both movies and confirmed that it was indeed the very same minigun in both films. For T2 though, they modified the minigun slightly, removing the foregrip and just rearranging the carry handle. Number 5. Hollywood's Recurring Newspaper Prop Every so often, film buffs will stumble across a prop that isn't simply recycled in one or two movies, but is in fact a stock prop used across a whole gamut of productions. One such prop is a newspaper, distinguished by a picture of a woman smiling on the inside spread. The prop is actually the creation of the Earl Hayes Press, a Californian outfit which specialises in making bespoke props for films and TV. This particular newspaper is basically Hollywood's go-to whenever they need or want to show a character reading one, because as a fabricated prop full of fake news, it means that the film's prop department doesn't need to go through the tedious legal clearances necessary to feature a real news rag. You can find the paper in countless films, including the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake and No Country for Old Men. Not to mention Back to the Future, Casper, 10 Things I Hate About You, and literally dozens of TV series. The newspaper picked up a mainstream media coverage in 2010 when fans started to notice its ubiquity across Hollywood, so it's perhaps no coincidence that we've seen a lot less of the common prop in recent years. Hopefully the Earl Hayes press aren't feeling the pinch too much though. Number 4. Die Hard's Teddy Bear – The Hunt for Red October Though it's far from the most memorable moment in John McTiernan's peerless 1988 action classic Die Hard, you might recall that John McClane starts out his day brandishing an adorable brown teddy bear with a distinctive red ribbon tied around its neck, which he intends to give to his kids. Well, the exact same teddy reappears in McTiernan's 1990 follow-up The Hunt for Red October. At the end of the movie, a triumphant Jack Ryan is seen sleeping on a plane next to a teddy bear he picks up for his daughter. And yes, it's even got the same red ribbon tied around its neck. If these films weren't from the same director, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was just a coincidence, but seeing as they are, there's no way this wasn't an intentional easter egg. Number 3. Aliens Repurposed Coffee Grinder – Back to the Future This is absolutely a case where the subsequent use of a prop completely outshone its original cinematic utility. Now you probably remember that Back to the Future ends with the shameless sequel bait of Doc returning from the future to warn Marty and Jennifer about their troubled future kids. You might also remember that Doc has to insert some food scraps into a device called the Mr. Fusion Generator in order to power the new and improved DeLorean. However, you might not have noticed that this is not the first time we've seen this device, albeit under a different name and purpose. It first appeared in the original Alien film as a coffee grinder. Talk about stepping up your roles going from coffee grinder to fusion reactor! Number 2. Austin Powers Wig – Ocean's Eleven there are many, many things that are distinctively garish about Austin Powers, from his prominent teeth to his coke bottle glasses, epic mound of chest hair, and yes, his rather naff-looking haircut. For reasons that still aren't quite clear, Myers wore an Austin Powers wig while rehearsing for the role, and that wig ended up having a most unexpected second life a few years later. Steven Soderbergh's 2001 Ocean's Eleven remake features a memorable beat where Rusty disguises himself as a doctor, and in an attempt to seem more doctory, he dons a pair of fake specs and covers his frosted hair with a boring-looking wig. And that is the very same wig that Myers rehearsed in for Austin Powers. Number 1. The 2GAT123 License Plate And now we come to another prop that's been a Hollywood mainstay for decades, much like the aforementioned newspaper. This time though, it's a California car license plate of 2GAT123, which has been featured in Beverly Hills Cop 2, Go, as well as Training Day, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Role Models, Pay It Forward, Traffic, Mulholland Drive, Be Cool, Harsh Times, and countless TV shows. And as for the reason for this license plate being so commonplace, well, the state of California no longer issues license plates with the GAT designation, which allows prop masters to use it without unwittingly identifying any vehicle or person driving around in the real world. Because the human brain isn't as drawn to strings of letters and numbers as it is a human face, it's safe to say that this recycled prop has flown under the radar a little more easily than that pesky newspaper has.